Hi, hello my dears, happy to meet you again and how are you? I hope you are fine and happy and I am fine and happy here. So welcome back to English class. In the last class we read the poem from the railway carriage and today we are going to uh, analyze the poetic devices used in the poem. Okay, ready? Let's uh, listen to the poetic devices. Okay, listen here. Poetic devices. And in the, um, in the class, Taj Mahal, when we discussed the poem Taj Mahal, I think we discussed the poetic devices too. Don't you remember? What are the main poetic devices? Let us see. Listen. Yes. Rhyming words. Rhyme scheme. Rhythm. Alliteration. Then, listen. Assonance. Refrain. Imagery. Figure, figures of speech, symbolism, and allusion. These are the main poetic devices poets use to beautify their poems. What is the use of poetic devices? Can anyone tell me? What is the use of poetic devices? Tell me. Yes. Poetic devices are used to beautify poems. Beautification of poems. Not only really in the poems but in the prose also. Writers use poetic devices to make their writing more beautiful. Okay, let's analyze which of these poetic devices are in the poem from the railway carriage. Really, the poem from the railway carriage is a poem with so many poetic devices. So beautifully arranged. Okay, let's analyze. Listen here. First of all, rhyming words. Can you find out the rhyming words from the first stanza of the poem? Okay, look at your text and read the first stanza of the poem and try to find out the rhyming words from the stanza. Pause the class and write down the rhyming words from the first stanza in your notebook. Okay? Okay, I hope uh, you have written the rhyming words in your notebook. Now, let us check whether uh, your writing is correct or not. Okay, listen here. Which is ditches, battle, cattle. So, what are the rhyming words here from the first stanza? Which is ditches, first pair of rhyming words. Then, which is the second pair of rhyming words? Battle, cattle. Battle, cattle. Why? Why they are rhyming words? The words ends with same sound. Words end with same sound sound. Battle, cattle, l. It, the, both the words end, end with l sound. Which is ditches. Both the words end with s sound. Okay. Now, find out the rhyming words from the second stanza. Pause the class and write down the rhyming words in your notebook. Okay, ready? Now check your writing. Yes. Plain, rain, first pair, second pair, I, buy. Now go to the third stanza. Write down the rhyming words. Class, on the stop here, which it away notebook later. Okay? So, shall we check your writing? Here. Scrambles, brambles, gazes, daisies. 
basis, basis. Okay. Then, last tense. Which are the pairs of rhyming words? Tell me. Yes. Road, Lord, River, Forever. River, Ever. So two pairs. First pair, Road, Lord. Second pair, River, Forever. So these are the rhyming words. Now, shall we go to the next poetic device? What is it? Yes, rhyme scheme. What is the rhyme scheme of the first tensa of the poem? Listen here. What is the last word of the uh, first line of the first tensa? Which is. So, which is sound. Let's give the sound a name. What name we can give the sound is? Yeah, here. A. Now look at the second word, which is. Which is the sound? S. That's why we have the sound. That's why we have the sound. That's why we have the letter that we have. So, is it same as the which is? Yes. So, A. Now, look at the next word, battle. Is the sound same as the first and second one? Is it? Uh, battle. Uh. Is, the, is it uh, same as the first two sounds? No. So, we should give Another name. But what name we can give? B. Yes, sure. So look at the uh, fourth word, cattle. A. What name we can give? Yes, B. Why? It is same as battle. So we have given names for the sounds. Which is A. Which is A. Why? Both are same sounds. Which is? Which is? Z. And battle, cattle. Name B. Random. Or A shabdam ayodhe randinim B yadadane nalgi. So, what is the rhyme scheme? Yes. A, A, B, B. So, a, A, B, B is the rhyme scheme of the first tensor of the poem. Okay. Engine yana rhyme scheme edu dhanna dhanna manis rhyme ilo. Avasanathe shabdathe nama lori peri uđukka. Aduttha varide avasanathe shabdhaum adu thanni anangil a peri. Vergari shabdhaum anangil aduttha B anna peri uđukka. A reedhi ila ana nama lori rhyme scheme kandru peri kena. So, come to the second stanza. What are the uh, words of the last, last words of each line from the second stanza? Plain, rain, I, buy. Plain, rain, I, buy. Let's give them names. A, plain, aim, A. Next, rain. What is the name we can give? A, Y. Both are same sounds. Now come to the third word, I. Mughalloma, Mughalate, Randa Shabdoma, Idin Samyondo. No. So, give another name. B. Next, by. I, by. I, I sound. So, B. So, what is the rhyme scheme? Yes, A, A, B, B. Yes. Now, find out the rhyme scheme of the third stanza. Pause the class and write down the rhyme scheme in your notebook of the third stanza. 
Okay, let us see. Yes, what is the rhyme scheme? A A B B. A A B B. Now find out the rhyme scheme of the fourth stanza. Yes, what is the rhyme scheme? A A B B. So the four stanzas have the same rhyme scheme. A A B B. Okay. Now come to the next poetic device. Rhythm. What do you mean by rhythm? Tala. When we read the poem, we will feel a rhythm. Listen. Faster than fairies, faster than witches, bridges and houses, hedges and ditches. Look at the line here. Some a part of the words are red color. The red colored uh, parts of the words are stressed syllables. We will say stressed syllables. ആ വാക്കുകൾക്ക് ഊന്നൽ കൊടുത്തുകൊണ്ടാണ് നമ്മൾ ഈ ഭാഗം വായിക്കുക ഫാസ്റ്റ് ദ ഫേറിസ് ഫാസ്റ്റ് ദ വിച്ചസ് ബെഡ്ജസ് ആൻഡ് ഹൗസസ് ഹെഡ്ജസ് ആൻഡ് ഡേച്ചസ് ആ റെഡ് കളേഡ് വേർഡ്സ് അല്ലേ ആ ആ ഭാഗമല്ലേ ഉയർന്നു കേൾക്കുക ആ ഉയർന്നു കേൾക്കുന്ന ശബ്ദമാണ് സ്ട്രെസ്ഡ് സിലബൽസ് ഉയർന്നു കേൾക്കാത്തവയാണ് അൺസ്ട്രെസ്ഡ് റീഡ് ഇറ്റ് വൺസ് മോർ Faster than fairies, faster than witches, bridges and houses, hedges and ditches. So what is that rhythm? Faster than fairies, faster than witches, faster than, than bridges and houses, hedges and ditches. Isn't it, isn't it uh, the rhythm of a train? So our poem has the rhythm of a train. Moving Train Engine yana e rhythm idil kondu vandirikkunnathu How does the poet created the rhythm of a moving train in his poem using the stressed and unstressed syllables using stressed and unstressed syllables So Stressed and unstressed syllables make rhythm. That is pretty much it. When we uh, look for rhythm in a poem, what, what make rhythm? The stressed and unstressed syllables. Uh, which is the stressed syllable in the first word? Faster. Which is the stressed syllable? Fast. Faster than. Fair is. Faster than witches, bridges and houses, hedges and ditches. Can you get the idea? Can you identify the stressed and unstressed syllables? Okay. So, using stressed and unstressed syllables, the poet created the rhythm of a moving train. Okay. So, next. Alliteration. Next poetic device is alliteration. Look at the um, colored sounds. Faster than fair is faster than which is. F. Which is the colored sound? F. F sound is repeating in the same line. In the same line. So repetition of same sound. Same consonant sounds is known as alliteration. Repetition of same consonant sound in one line is known as alliteration. Which, Which uh, sound, sound is repeating in this, this line? F. F sound. Faster than fair is faster than F. F sound. Okay. So... Can you find out other instances of alliteration from the poem? Read the poem and find out the other instances of alliteration. 
pause the class and write down the examples of alliteration in your notebook. Okay? Instances means examples. So write down the examples in your notebook. Okay, I hope you have written the uh, examples of alliteration. Now check your answers. This is one alliteration. Bridges and houses, hedges and ditches. Which consonant sound is repeating here? Yes, H. Houses and hedges. Houses and hedges. So there is one more alliteration. Which is that? Each a glimpse and gone forever. G. Glimpse, gone. G sound is repeating. So that is the alliteration. Okay. Next. Next pointing device. Imagery. Imagery. Word pictures. What do you mean by imagery? Imagery is the word pictures. Vakmaya chitra. Vakugal kunda chitra varakinada. Visual images ava. Namka kana batina manisil kana batina. Visual images ava. Then auditory images ava. Auditory kelkan galina. Yes. Listen here. Here is a child who clampers and scrambles all by himself and gathering brambles. And can you see the child in your mind? Just close your eyes and try to imagine that, that child. Child is clampering and scrambling, scrambles and gathering brambles. Can you imagine that scene? Listen. This is here. Here is a child who clampers and scrambles all by himself and gathering brambles. That is the image using words. And in the right side, you can see the image using paint and brush. Isn't it? So, these are the visual images. Visual images appeal to our eyes. Visual images appeal to our eyes. So these are the mental images created using words. Visual images. Um, can you find out other visual images from the poem? Pause the class and find out and write down the other visual images in your notebook. Stop it with your in the Okay, I hope you have written the other visual images from the poem. Let's check your answers. Ready? Next visual image. Charging along like troops in a battle. Charging along like troops in a battle. Next visual image. All through the meadows, the houses and cattle. Meadows, houses and cattle. We can imagine that scene. Houses and cattle. Next. Sides of the hill and the plain. Hill and plain. Like this. And there are other visual images also. Listen. Driving away. We can see in our mind. A tram who stands and gazes. Like this. A tram who stands and gazes. We can see in our mind. Then, the green food stringing the daisies. When we read this, we can imagine the daisy flowers that is uh, in a row, in a green field, in a row. We can see the daisy flowers in our mind. That is the green force stringing the daisies. This scene. 
Next. A car driving the road, lumping along with man and road. That also is a visual image. This image. Next. Here is a mill and there is a river. <laughs> when we read this line, we can see this picture in our mind. Or we can see a mill and a river in our mind. That is. Okay. So, these are the visual images in the poem from a railway carriage. So, the poem abounds in visual images. Each and every line is a visual image. That is the uh, particular speciality of this poem. Okay. So, let's uh, go for the next image. The next image. Painted stations whistle by. When you read this, can you hear a train whistling by? Can you? Yes. So we can hear in our mind this sound of the train. When we read this uh, lines, painted stations, we still buy. So, this is the audio using words. And this is the audio using sound. Okay. Uh, can you find out other auditory images from our uh, poem? And what do you mean by auditory image? Words that create a sense of sound. Words that create a sense of sound. So the auditory image appeals to our ear. Okay. Find out the other auditory images from the poem. Yes. When we read this line, driving rain, we can uh, imagine the sound of the rain too. That is auditory image. Okay, next poetic device is figures of speech. Figures of speech. There are so many figures of speech. Simile, metaphor, personification, hyperbole, etc. And I think we discussed simile and metaphor in the poem Taj Mahal. Do you remember? Simile and metaphor. Okay, let us see what are the figures of speech used in the poem from the railway carriage. Okay, ready? Listen. What do you mean by simile? Simile is comparing two things using the words like or as. Comparing two things Using the words like or as. Is there any simile in our poem from the railway carriage? Read the poem and try to find out a simile. Yes, there is a simile. Charging along like troops in a battle. Charging along like troops in a Battle. Soldiers marching, houses running. Idu pole yana, idu pogna nana parayina The train is moving like soldiers marching or houses running. That is, the train is moving like soldiers marching in a battle. So, here is the simile. What are the two things compared here? The rainy houses and the troops of soldiers. And the moving train. So, that also is. And the moving train. The rainy houses, the troops of soldiers and the running 
train, moving train. Okay. Which word is used here or to compare these two things? Like. What is the word? Like. Okay. And charging along like troops in a battle all through the meadows, the houses and cattle. Okay. Find out an example for simile from the second stanza. Pause the class and find out the example for simile. Okay. What is the simile in the second stanza? All the sides of the hill and the plain fly as thick as driving rain. Fly as thick as driving rain. What are the things compared here? The side of the hill and the plain is compared to the driving rain. Why are they compared? I think in your average and very comparing with your hills and plains and driving rain. Every day in the end of the night, through the window of a fast moving railway carriage, all sides seems to be flying away. That is the point. Through the window of a fast moving railway carriage, all the sides seems to be flying away. Heavy rain with wind. That movie is the hills and plains. That is the comparison here. Okay. And which word is used to make the comparison between them? Yes. As. A. Yes. As. So. What are the poetic devices used in this poem? Let us ransack our memory and list them. What are the poetic devices used in this poem from a railway carriage? What are they? Can, can you tell me? Yes, rhyming words. Then, rhyme scheme. Then, rhythm. Next one, alliteration. Next one, imagery. That is visual images and auditory images. Then, figures of speech. Which figure of speech is used here? Simile. Okay. So, we have analyzed all the poetic devices used in the poem from a railway carriage. And here's a checklist for the poetic devices. Look here. Yes. Draw this table in your notebook and write down the examples of poetic devices. Listen, poetic devices, devices checklist. checklist. Give this heading. Rhyming words. Write down all the rhyming words from the poem. Then rhyme scheme. Write down the rhyme scheme of each stanza. Then rhythm. What is the rhythm here? And how the rhythm is created? Write down those things. Then alliteration. Examples of alliteration. Refrain. Nil. No refrain is in our poem. Then imagery. Visual imagery and auditory images. Then figure of speech. Which figure of speech is used and example for that. Then symbolism. No symbolism in our palm. And allusion. And no allusion in the palm. So this is. So this is your homework. Uh, make this checklist in your notebook. And write all these things. And take a photo and send me personally. So this is your homework. Okay.
So that's all for the palm from a railway carriage. So we can discuss your doubts in our class. So see you in the class. Till then, bye-bye.